Ugye? Megállj őt, nem mondtad. Championship bronze in 2019 and silver in 2017, Zaza Nadirata. In lane seven, um, Tokyo Olympian in C2000, um, bronze medalist at the under 23 World Championship in C1500, Peter Fuchsen from Czech Republic. In lane eight, a uh, new entry on the world stage who started the season with uh, two wins in, in Nigeria at their uh, local regattas, um, Michael Moses from Nigeria. And in lane nine, the 2019 South Asian Games, gold medalist in this, in this event for the Philippines, Ermi Makaranas. Again, quite the pedigree here in this race with uh, a number of Olympians. Um, a number of World Championship and World Cup medalists um, should be an extremely fast one here as we're getting underway in these World Championships uh, on Canoe 22 on Lake Winnook. So the athletes are in the booth now, as you can see, about to get underway. Um, watch out for, for lane one, lane four, and five, and six uh, really, really fast starters, and then our Canadian representative again in that lane three here in Wild Bull. Four hundred positions, four hundred. 
Ready, sit. And we have a start here in this first race. Really, really fast start here from lane five. Um, Hungary's David Korzanski, but seeing Zaza from Georgia really stretching and now in, in building a little bit of a lead as they're going through, but close, close race here in the first 100 meters of this first race of the World Championships. So the athletes are entering the last 100 meters now, as you can see by the red buoys, and we're about to close this one out. Really close finish here between the first four athletes. Again, top three directly to the final, so very, very tight here. Lane four, one, and seven, but too close to call here, so we'll have to wait for confirmation of those results. But great race here um, by all these athletes, and then taking first place on your screen, Alexei Kolyevich from Poland. You can feel the excitement here around Lake the Nook. Lots of people cheering, getting really into it already. What an exciting start to the day, Biel. Yeah, what a great race. And we can see a nice shot here of the start again happening and, and then really, really fast strokes as people go up a lot of speed. And then it's all about transitioning and trying to lose as little speed as possible as the lactic acid builds over this 200 meters. So great racing here by all these world-class athletes in this first heat of the men's C1-200. As we're ready for heat two of the men's C1 200 meter, we would like to thank our platinum partner, Nova Scotia Gaming Corporation, and Support for Sport. Support for Sport helps develop community and provincial sports programs through the sale of designated lottery products. The program raises funds for training and development opportunities for athletes, coaches, and officials throughout Nova Scotia. And we'll wait for confirmation of the results, but in the meantime, um, here's the, the lineup for our second heat of the men's C1 200 meters. Um, oh, and here are the results, pardon me, so we can get confirmation of the win by Poland's Oleksii Kolyadic, um, Spain, Alfonso Benavides taken second place, and Georgia's Zaza Nadiradze um, ad all advancing to the A final directly. Eduard Bumia coming in with a strong sixth place here. He'll move on to the semifinals and they'll take place a little bit later this week. And in the second heat here um, of this race, uh, we have in lane one, uh, in his first senior world championship, competed in two junior world championships from Tajikistan, Umar Rust Rustamov, gold medalist in C2500 and C silver in C2000 at the under 23 championship in 2017, Oleg Nuta in, from Romania in lane two. Double medalist in, at the 2021 U23 World Championship, Germany's Nico Piekert is lining up in lane three. Um, in lane four, fourth place in C1-200 earlier this year in Rachitse and winner of the C1-500 B final in Rachitse, Mattia Alfonsi from Italy. In lane five, um, B finalist from, uh, sorry, bronze in this event at the World Cup in Rachitse and fourth place in at the 2020 Zeged World Cup. Um, Ukraine's Ole Borovic. In lane six, um, B finalist at last year's under 23 C1000 and C2200. Um, yeah, C2200, pardon me, in 2019. Uh, representing the Gig Arbor Canoe and Kayak Race Team, Jonathan Grady from the United States. Lane seven, bronze in this event at the 2022 Asian Games Sprint Championship back in March in Thailand. And we have Kazakhstan's Viktor Stepanov. In lane eight, 11th in C1, 200 in 2019, and at the under 23 World Championships, and a top 10 finisher in under 23 marathon canoeing in 2019, we have Colombia's Alejandro Ramirez in lane eight. And in lane nine, um, 22-year-old, pardon me, first World Championship appearance for Peru's Wonderly Noriega. So great lineup here from all these athletes um, getting ready to race the second heat of the men's C1, 200 meter. Once again, as the athletes are making their way to the start line, just a reminder that the top three will make it directly to the final, while the rest of the athletes will have to compete um, for a spot in the final in the semifinals taking place later this week. One minute. 
to start here, just waiting for the start system booth to come back up for the athletes to get on the start line, and then we'll uh, we'll get going. But it looks like uh, we have a, a little bit of an issue here and some support going onto the line, so we may have a bit of a delay here in the second race um, at the World Championship. So we'll just have to wait a minute as things get figured out. Um, things seem to be hooked up and, and things are, are seem to be back in order, so we'll, we should be ready to get underway shortly. And there you go, the boots are now up, so athletes will make their way to their line and we'll get the start for the second heat. So once again, so once again lane one, um, Tajikistan, Rustamov, lane two, Romania, Oleg Nuta, lane three, Germany's Nico Kikert, lane four, Italy's Mattia Alfonsi, lane five, Ukraine's Ole Borovic, lane six, the United States, Jonathan Grandy, lane seven, Kazakhstan, Viktor Stepanov, lane eight, Columbus, Alejandro Ramirez, and in lane nine, uh, not making the start this morning from Peru. We have a start here in this race against quick, quick, quick start from these athletes. Want to build as much speed as possible in that first 100 meters, but looks like a great start from Germany's um, Nico Pikert and as well as Romania's Oleg Nuta. And entering the last 100 meters looks like Rom uh, Romania with a slight edge here. Um, too close to call so far for seconds. A really close race here as we're closing out the second heat of the C1 200 meters. Big finish here from a number of these athletes trying to lunge for the line and coming top three, but really clear, clear race here from uh, Germany's um, Nico Pieker taking the, the win here in the second heat of the men's C1 200 meter. Great race in The smile says it all. Yeah, these races are ex extremely challenging and races, and races especially over the 200 meters are always very, very tight. So just executing your race plan and, and, and closing out the win, knowing that you're advancing directly to the semi the, the, to the final rather than having to contest the final, um, just that uh, feels good. And now you can focus on that recovery and get ready for that next, that next race. Absolutely. And you can see here Germany really dominating right from, uh, from the beginning as we watch the replay. Yeah, but really, really close race here for that second and third spot as we're, as we're coming through. And as you can see in the replay here, it looks like lane six and lane, f uh, lane four and lane five might have been the, the ones to take it over lane seven. So very, very close race, but great shot here from Nico Pieckert from Germany. I'm um, just closing his race and lunging his boat, taking the win with a, a bit of a fist pump here. So um, Love that celebration. <laughs> We'll just wait for the results and confirmation as they'll appear on the screen. And then there you go, confirmation of those top three making the A final. Germany's Nico Pikert, Ukraine, Ole Borovic, and Italy's um, Mattia Alfonsi will all advance. Um, other other athletes will move to the semifinals um, for, for this event that will take in a little place a little bit later this week. Next up, we have the first in a series of para-canoe events. Now, it's been six years since the para-canoe made its Paralympic debut that happened at the Tokyo Olympics. Athletes compete in two types of boats, the kayak and the bob, a traditional Polynesian style of boat across three classifications. So as we're ready for heat one of the KL2 men's 200 meter event, Canoe 2022 would like to thank our bronze sponsors for this event, they are East Coast Credit Union and Bell Media. Thanks so much. And we have the start line here in this KL2 men's 200 meters first heat. Um, in lane two, newcomer on the world stage, Uruguay's Grosius Adan. In lane three, silver earlier this year in Poznan, 12 months after picking up para canoeing. I'm really working towards this goal of qualifying for the 2024 Paralympics. Christian Volpi from Italy. In lane four, 10th place finisher in Tokyo last year and sixth of the World Championship. Fourth place earlier in Poznan, and he's the South American and Pan American champion. Argentina's Emilio Atanamo. Lane five, Tokyo 2020 silver medalist and upgrading from his fourth place in Rio. He is the defending world champion in this event, Ukraine's Mikola Sinuk. 
in lane six, uh, fourth place at the Tokyo uh, Paralympics last year, eighth in Rio in KL3, New Zealand's Court Martin. Lane seven, 11th place finisher at the Paralympics last year, Hiromi Tatsumi from Japan. And in lane eight, semi finalist of the Cosmian World Cup earlier this year, Michael Ballard from the United States. And we have a start already in seeing lane five here, really who's taking a strong lead again. That's the world championship in this event from, from last year in Tokyo 2020, silver medalist, really powering through um, as we're going through um, this race. Once again, the top three will advance directly to the final, um, and, and the rest will move to the, pair, uh, the, the semi final. Um, but it does look like um, Ukraine really starting and dominating this event as we're going through. It's a, it's a strong finish here as they're approaching the finish line. Looks like Ukraine, then New Zealand, then Italy coming in close over Argentina to take um, that third spot and move directly to the A final. And yeah, great shot here of Mikola as he's closing out his race here. Experienced paddler in this event, really showing a lot of power right from the start. Great, great, great start. Um, and taking the lead right from the first 25 meters. So, um, great racing from him and, and the three athletes advancing directly. How important is that start, especially in these uh, shorter races, Theo? Um, it's it's really critical. It does build up all the speed that you have. It also does give you a bit of a mental edge, knowing that you've kind of started really well and are and are moving through your race plan at, at the right pace. There there's only a short opportunity to build up speed as you're going through the first few strokes, and then uh, really get that first few strokes perfect. Once you're at top speed, it's about keeping it, and that's where the endurance and the tolerance to the lactic acid really comes into play. And that's what those athletes athletes will train quite a bit. A lot of top speed and a lot of just endurance this, uh, to to, to to tolerate that lactate. And we have confirmation of the results you can see on the screen. Ukraine's Mikola Siniuk uh, taking the win here, um, followed by New Zealand's Co Scott Martlew and Italy's Christian Volpe, um, all advancing to the A final. As the athletes make their way to the start line for Heat 2 of the Men's KL2 200 meter event, Canoe 2022 would like to thank our supporting sponsors, Patterson, McInnes Cooper, Cluet Insurance, Royal Bank of Canada, Immediacy, Glow the Event Store, and Docs Unlimited. Over to you, Phil. Thanks very much, Priya. And yeah, so this in this second heat against top three, we'll move directly to the final of the men's KL2 men, 200 meters. Um, in lane two, we have a new entrant to the, the world scene, um, Nigeria's Tumitope Olasupo. Um, in lane three, our Canadian representative um, from the Balmy Beach Canoe Club, semi-finalist last year at the 2021 World Championship and bronze at the 2018 Pan American Championships right here on Lake Binook in 2018 from Canada, Stefan Samoyla. In lane four, we have the Paralympic seventh place finisher and fifth place finisher at the last World Championship, bronze medalist in the 2021 Para Canoe World Cup in Zeged and previously competed at three Paralympic Games in wheelchair tennis, Great Britain's David Philipson. In lane five, um, Paralympic bronze medalist in 2021 and 2019, world silver medalist, fifth place in Rio, and Federico has also competed in canoe polo and canoe slalom. From Italy, Federico Manzarella. Lane six, 12th place at, our late, at the latest Paralympic Games and seventh place in Rio. Um, also a competitive ballroom dancer for 11 years, Hungary, Andras Rosbora. And in lane seven, 45-year-old first entry at the World Championship level from Argentina, Mariano Turner. Again, number of Paralympians here um, in, in multiple sports and all this. So class of the field here in the second heat of the KL2 men's 200 meters as the athletes are approaching the start line um, for the second heat. Brazil, you're in the wrong lane. Brazil, you're in the wrong lane. Please come across one. And Nigeria. Nigeria, so again, please come across Nigeria, 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 Canada, Samoyla, um, Great Britain's Philipson, Italy's Mansarella, Hungary, Rosbora, and Argentina's Turner getting ready to race here in the second heat of the men's KL2 200 meters. Thank you, Nigeria. Just waiting for Nigeria to enter the booth here and all the athletes will be set to go. Um, great shot here from, uh, from Timmy Tope.
Yeah, part of it is relief, uh, and in a lot of cases, just kind of knowing that that first step is done, you're now in the final, you're getting ready to go for that world title, um, and then part of it is just a little bit of nerves getting off and, and some rest, like, we, especially in the last few years, athletes may not have had the chance to race as much as they, they could have, or training may have been impacted and all that, so just getting back to a regular world championship schedule and, and just uh, getting that first rest is, is really good and great. But, uh, Looks pleased here, as you can see, a smile. Oh, yeah, big smiles. Nice. <laughs> uh, great, and, and congratulations to David uh, taking the win here, as we can see on the results board. And uh, 44.5, 44 and then Italy's Federico Mazzarella and Hungary's Andras Rosbora, um, all advancing to the A final of the KL2 men's 200 meters. Congrats to them. Our first women's para canoe event, VL3, is coming up, and we'd like to give a big shout out to our community sponsors for their support. That includes Downtown Dartmouth, Develop Nova Scotia, and Halifax Water. Canoe 2022 would also like to thank Turnkey Travel for delivering all of our travel and accommodation needs for this event. And yeah, and we can see on the, on the graphic, um, if you have access to a screen, that the VL3, so again, a little bit different than the race we just saw. Um, VL comes from the, the VA and then has a, a pontoon in the boat there. So you'll see athletes paddling more on the canoe style on, on, on one side or two sides, depending if they're switching as they're going through. But exciting racing. The VA program is continuing to develop with additional um, spots getting added to the Paralympics over the last few years. But it uh, should be an exciting race here in the VL3 as we're going through. Um, so we'll have in, in lane two here, sixth place in KL3 at the Worlds last year, eighth place in Tokyo. And, and semi-finalist in Rio. She is new to the VL3, but have been specialized in the KL3 before, from Brazil, Marie Santi. In lane three, 30-year-old first appearance at their world championship, Uzbekistan, Muklisa Ishmir, Ishmir Zaba, Zaiba. Um, in lane four, fifth of last year's world championship, um, winner of the Poznan World Cup in this event earlier this year, Paralympian in Rio, coming seventh in KL3, and a proud member of the Mississauga Canoe Club, Canada's Erica Scar. In lane five, defending world champion in VL3 and KL2, Paralympic champion in KL2, and Paralympic silver and bronze medalist in swimming from Great Britain, Charlotte Henshaw. In lane six, a 19-year-old first appearance on the international circuit this year from Australia, Amy Rao. In lane seven, um, 30 year old semi finalist from last year's world championship, Jap Japan, Shiho Miyaj Miyajima. And in lane eight, um, 29 year old from India, first appearance on the international circuit this year, um, Sangeeta Rashko. Oh, actually, pardon me, India will not be taking this, part, this start this morning, so it'll be those uh, six athletes on the line again, top three yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have a start here in this race. These boats are a lot heavier, so it takes a lot of energy to get off the line, as you can see. But really, really building a lot of speed with high surf rates as these athletes are moving through the first 50 meters of their race. And we're approaching 
the halfway point, it does look like a really strong start here from Charlotte Henshaw from Great Britain. Just really powering through, moving into some powerful strokes, driving a lot of glide from the boat, letting the boat work. And you can see that's working really strong. We're in a strong race here from um, lane two and lane four. And then they will be actually competing for those last few spots onto the, the A final. Um, so it should be an exciting last 50 meters here as we're approaching the finish line. It does look like a strong push. It'll be very, very close. And looking if, if some of these athletes will be able to hang on for that, that those direct final spots. It does look like lane two, um, Brazil will move on directly and very, very close between Uzbekistan and Canada um, for those direct spots. And yes, confirmation here of the, the winner in, the, in this first heat, Charlotte Henshaw. Congratulations in, the, in this VL3 200 meter um, first heat. Big smile from her and lots of lots of cheers also coming from the sidelines there. Yeah, and great to see Japan here compl completing the field here um, in this first heat of the the hail of the BL3. And nice nice replay here. You can see some of the athletes will elect to start try to start as fast as they can and then they'll pay the price a little bit in the second half, while some will try to just pull back a little bit and just try to kind of bring some energy and try to accelerate in the second half here as we go. And different techniques, you can see some higher stroke rates versus some lower stroke rates as we're going through. Um, just depends on kind of how much power and how much um, energy you still have as things are going and different tactics will play um, a role as well in this race. But very, very close finish. Decisive win here from Carol Henshaw, and then very, very close here. So second place coming from lane two, and then it does look like Erica Scar from Canada has taken that third spot and will advance directly to the final. And again, confirmation of the results, Charlotte Henshaw taking the win at uh, just under a minute, 59.89, followed by Brazil's Marie Santilli um, and Erica Scarf in third place. These three athletes will be moving on directly to the A final. And we do have one more heat of the BL3 women's event to go. As we take you to the 200 meter start, a quick shout out to our bronze sponsors, East Coast Credit Union and Bell Media for their support here at Canoe 22. And we have uh, the start list here. So in lane two, the bronze medalist of the 2020 Zeged World Cup, Israel's Talia Eilat. In lane three, from Hungary, Juliana Toth. In lane four, the silver medalist from Rio in KL2 in fifth in Tokyo, four times medalist in VL, including bronze in this event last year. Winner of the silver medal in Poznan earlier this year at the World Cup, Natalia Lahu Tenko. Um, in lane five, silver medalist from the World Championship last year in VL3 and KL3, um, also competed at the 2022 Paralympics in Nordic skiing, Great Britain's Hope Gordon. In lane six, um, from Little Rock, picked up spr sprint kayaking in 2014, sixth in this event in 2018. From the United States, Jillian Elwart. And in lane seven, um, starting on the, the line here for Nigeria, Basede Omogoni. Once again, a stacked field here with a number of uh, Paralympians and, and World Championships medalists. Um, should be a fast one here as we're getting ready to go in the second heat of the VL3 um, women's 200 meter heat. Um, as a reminder, the top three will make it directly to the final, while fourth to seventh will move on to the semifinals to be competed um, a little bit later this week. The athletes are the just athletes approaching the start, approaching line, the start nine. line nine. Now we'll be, now we'll be putting, putting their boats in the start in lane, lane again. again. Um, in lane um, two in lane from Israel, Elat. Lane, lane three, Hungary's Toth. Lane, lane four, Ukraine's Levy Tenko. Lane five, Great Britain's Gordon. Lane six, the United States Elworth. And in lane seven, Nigeria's Ramboni. Ready, set. And 
we have a start here in the second heat of the VL3 women's 200 meters. Great start from lane two, four, and five here as they're blasting off the line again. A lot of experience from these athletes, all medalists on the international stage, um, and, and really pushing to the this first half. But don't count out the United States, Jillian Elwell, who's making a really strong push here for those top three positions as we're driving towards the second hundred meters of this event. Those look like the silver medalist from the last World Championships. Um, Hope Gordon is, is building a little bit of a lead here over Natalia Lehutenko, um, who's really pushing here in the second half. The United States, Jillian Elworth, really having a solid race here as we're completing this, this second heat. But now in the last 100 meters, really trying to raise the rate here to try to make a push for that finish line and secure their spot in the, the A final. Great win here by Great Britain. Um, Hope Gordon really taking it um, to the rest of the field. Ukraine and the United States coming in a second and third, and then some great racing here from uh, from the other athletes as they prepare and, and complete their heats um, of this uh, World Championships um, first race. So again, nice shot here of Hope Gordon just uh, completing uh, her race here, taking the win in the second heat of uh, the VL2, uh, VL3 party. You can see midway through the race here, um, approaching the 100 meters, uh, it was really, really solid racing and then great, great to see these athletes kind of push through as they were coming through um, and we'll expect some fast times for them as we know that they're world class paddlers in this event. And they've even got some sunshine uh, coming out for them too to welcome them to the finish line there. Nice to see that the sun coming out here uh, at Lake Banook, although it does mean that it's probably going to get a little bit warmer. 29 degrees the high expected for today, uh, but 37 with the Humidex. So please uh, do stay hydrated uh, for everyone uh, out there who is, uh, who's watching today as well. As we look a bit deeper into today's race schedule, here's a look at what's coming up. We have the men's KL3 heats coming up next. Then we move to some sprint team boats with the men's and women's K4 500 meter heats and some men's and women's C2 action as well. You can find the schedule of races and all the day's results on our website at canoe22.com. And we do have confirmation of the results in the second heat of the VL3 women's 200 meters. Um, Hope Gordon from Great Britain taking the win here in just over a minute, so very tight between the two heats. Should be an exciting final. And then uh, Ukraine's Natalia Lehutenko taking the self, uh, second place, and Jillian Elwert coming from third, so those three athletes will advance directly to the A final. Just about to get started here in the first heat of the men's KL3 200 meters. Um, again, um, seven athletes in, in, in this heat. Um, top first, only first will advance directly to the final. Second two to seven will move to the semi-final. Um, so we'll have in lane two a 28-year-old multiple world championship semi-finalist from Israel, Ron Halavi. In lane three, 34-year-old competed at the 2021 World Cup in Zegat, Hungary, Uruguay, Jorge Obispo. In lane four, Paralympic eighth-place finisher in Tokyo at eighth of the 2021 championship, World Championships, fourth earlier this year in Poznan and bronze in Zegat in 2020, Hungary's Eric Kiss. Um, defending silver medalist and Paralympic bronze medalist from Tokyo, Great Britain's Robert Oliver takes um, the fifth lane. Um, in lane six, 19-year-old coming off a strong B-final showing last year at the World Championships and rapidly improving and has a super bright future in front of him, representing the Rideau Canoe Club, Canada's Gabriel Bui. In lane seven, 30-year-old first entry at the World Championships, Mexico's Omar Jimenez. And in lane eight, 21-year-old B-finalist of the World Cup in 2018, Argentina's Marcos Dominguez. And we do have a bit of a false start here, so we'll want the absence. 
and then we'll make their way back. And we'll, we'll get a bit more information around who committed the fault there. But athletes will circle, circle back to the start line, um, get repositioned, and we'll have a, another start in a few minutes here. Um, so someone would have started a little bit before the gun went or uh, pushed the lane a little bit too hard. So we'll have uh, the athletes circle back and then uh, get ready to go again here in this uh, men's KL3 um, 200 meter first heat. So false start was attributed to Mexico's um, um, Sanchez here um, for, for this race. So lane seven will have a false start. We'll have to make sure that they do commit a second false start. They will be disqualified the next race. So. So the athletes yeah, are just resetting here, here and we'll be on our way again. Again, in lane two, two. Um, Israel's Calabi, in lane three, Uruguay, 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 lane four, Hungary's Kiss, lane five, Uruguay's Oliver, 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 six, Canada, Canada, lane seven, Mexico's Kimenez, and lane eight, Argentina's Dominguez. And we are underway now, clean start here in this first heat of the men's KL. 200 meters. Strong, strong starts here for the Great Britain athlete Robert Oliver. And then uh, some of the athletes coming up. And again, first goes directly to the final. So lots of incentive to, to take the win here and save some energy um, rather than risk the semi-final. So the defending world championship silver medal is off to a great start here as he's rounding out this race. Um, really dominating, dominating here in this uh, first heat of the men's KL. Second place from, from Hungary and third place from Canada. So great racing here from, from these athletes as they're getting ready to go here um, and will advance to the semifinals that will take place a little bit later this week. Nice shot there of a Oliver. Just confirmed uh, to first place there. Yeah, you'd expect no less. I mean, the Paralympic bronze medalist, silver medalist of the World Championship, competed in Rio as well. So lots of experience in this event and uh, really showed that here on the lake this morning. And then uh, he'll move on and, and, and rest uh, before a, a really competitive final that will take place uh, later this week. This close up, you can really see the power and strength that's going into every stroke there. So two more heats to go in the men's KL3 classification ahead of this next one. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Sport Canada, the province of Nova Scotia, and the Halifax Regional Municipality. Yeah, and we'll get confirmation of the results here in just a minute um, it, it, as, as those become available. And yes, Robert Oliver from Great Britain taking the win here in a, just under 42 seconds, 41.96, followed by Hungary's Eric Kiss and Canada's Gabriel Goyi um, from the Rito Canoe Club in uh, third place. So great, great race here from all these athletes. Um, the, the, remainder, the remainder of the field will move on to semifinals a little bit this week. But uh, as we said, Robert Oliver will move on directly to the A point. And we're getting set to go in the second heat here of the men's KL2. Um, in lane three, we have the 29-year-old from Mexico, Eduardo Sanchez. In lane four, ninth of the 2021 World Championships and 2017 bronze medalist, Great Britain's Jonathan Young. 
lane four, seventh place of the Tokyo Paralympics, um, Spain's Juan Valle. In lane six, and 36 year old from Senegal, Edmond Sanka. And lane seven, 13th of the Paralympic Games in Tokyo. And in seventh, that big ball over last year, New Zealand's Corbin Hart. And in lane eight, the 2019 World Championship semi finalist from the United States, John Wallace. And strong and race strong here, very, very, very close very race between lane four and lane five, Great Britain and Spain, as they're pushing here for the finish line. And again, that top spot will advance directly to the A final, so lots on the line in this heat. Does look like Spain may have edged out Great Britain just a little bit, and New Zealand coming in in third place here in the, the second heat of the KO. KL3 but very, very close race. You can see Juan Valle just uh, really pleased with this, uh, this, how this heat went, and then uh, we'll advance directly to the A1A final this week, and we'll join uh, Robert Oliver in the first seat. This one was really close right through the middle there, you can see. It was really just at the end when uh, Juan Valle pulled ahead. Yeah, even at the entering the last 100 meters, three athletes in contention, really close field. As we move through the semifinals into the finals, the field will narrow, and you'll expect to have some more closer, closer racing as we go. Um, these races have moved from a few athletes being very competitive to now world-class events, especially with the addition into the Paralympic Games. So we've seen quite a bit of a step into the, the Paralympic program and then the, the, the para events. So um, a lot and a lot of talent out there and great to see some showing from the athletes and it's such close racing. So. Absolutely. Yeah, on pointing that out there. Congrats to him. We'll wait for the final results here, um, and in the meantime, we'd like to take the opportunity to thank all the volunteers who made this event possible, or making this event possible, and our volunteer sponsor, Support for Sport. Thank you very much, and thanks to everyone who showed up today. Already a number of people on the on the shore just cheering on the athletes. So, um, again, thanks for thanks for coming out. Some great racing coming your way um, all day today and through the week. Um, we have great weather here for this uh, this event, so it should be it should be a great showing for everyone. And we do have confirmation of the winners here in heat two of the men's KL three two hundred meters. Juan Valle from Spain um, taking the win, and uh, just a little bit faster than that first heat. And then uh, the other athletes will move on to the semifinal. We're moving on now to the third heat, the men's KL3. Um, seven athletes here competing in this one for that, that first place that will advance directly to the eighth. So in lane two, we have the 20 year old whose first appearance in the World Championships in Nigeria is Sunday Polowoni. In lane three, 26 year old 14th at the 2019 World Championship from Uzbekistan, Kazan Kuldasha. In lane four, 11th in Tokyo and 7th at last year's World Championship. Fifth in Poznan a little bit earlier this year. Quado Klokpa from Italy. In lane five, 10th in Tokyo and semi-finalist in Rio. Fifth at last year's World Championship. Bronze earlier this year in Poznan. Matthias Surwilo from Poland. In lane six, fourth of the to Tokyo Paralympics, semi-finalist in Rio, and fourth of the 2019 Silver uh, World Championships. From Australia, Dylan Little Hallis. And in lane seven, the 48-year-old semi-finalist in the 2021 World Championships. From Japan, Koji Imai. And in lane eight, 18-year-old, um, first time racing in the World Championship. From Chile, Marcelo Gonzalez. One minute to the start. The athletes are just approaching the start line and will be underway in a few seconds here in this third heat of the men's KL3 200 meters. Again, as a reminder for everyone, winner will advance directly to the A final here in this race.
We have a start here in the 30th of the men's KL3. Really strong start from Australia, Italy, and Poland. The middle lanes here, as you can see, that surf rate just jump all the way up as they're trying to build speed in this first hundred and really try to hang on in the second half of this race as they're competing for that top spot to make it straight to the A1. Really trying to keep that surf rate as high as they can and maintaining the power here as they're entering the last 50 meters of this race. It does look like Australia has a little bit of a lead as they're coming through, um, but really, really close between all of those athletes. It does look like Australia has taken the, the, the win here, Dylan Litterhouse, and then uh, close close between the second, third, and fourth. Um, but Dylan will advance here to the A final directly. Um, great race by him, and congratulations. Again, strong start here. You can see all these athletes in the middle lanes really able to generate some good connection right away and build up some speed. Um, and then as they're driving, really good finding the right pace between going out of control and being able to, to really transition and maintain some of that energy as they're going to um, These three athletes, these four athletes here that we have are really, really pushing the line here. So they would be contenders or would expect to be contenders as we move into the A final a little bit later this week. Here, you can really see the power and strength going into that. Yeah, and about a, a boat, a boat length of women here. I'm very, very close for third place between uh, um, Italy and uh, Uzbekistan uh, in, in this race. There'll uh, they'll be some close racing in the semifinals a little bit later um, for those remaining six spots in the A final. And we do have confirmation of the, the, the results here. Um, Australia, Dylan Littlehouse moving directly to the A final. Again, very, just under 42 seconds. So close, close field between the top three of each of the each. Then Poland and Uzbekistan. Uh, very close between Uzbekistan and Poland for that third place, 0 0.06. So some close racing here this morning on, on Lake Mount. Certainly an exciting start to the day. Uh, we are going to take a break in the race program now, but before we do, Canoe 22 would like to share a note of appreciation to Canoe Kayak Canada for their partnership in hosting the World Championships here on Lake Bunuk. And a very special thank you to the Atlantic Division of CKC. Paddling is a huge part of the summer here on Lake Bunuk for hundreds of athletes. The clubs here on the lake and the Atlantic Division have gone to great lengths to help the local organizing committee pull this off and would just like to give them some of our gratitude right now. We will be back at 11.30 with a pair of women's K4 500 meter heats.
nada para você, vai ter que vai ter um rachê, vocês vão rachar e não vai dar nada para ninguém. Rachar a pena não vai dar para ninguém. Five minutes now until our next race, and ahead of that, we have a little bit of world championship trivia for you. Uh, so here's the question. Which country has won the most ICF world championship medals? Any guesses, PL? Mm. I mean, if I had to guess, and, and my experience on racing, it, it's probably between Hungary and Germany, but if I had to guess, I would probably go Hungary. All right, yes. Well, you are right. Hungary has been the most successful nation at the ICF Canoe Sprint World Championships, winning a whopping 533 medals. 222 of those have been gold. And yes, your second guess as well, Germany in second place there with a total of 313 medals, of which 136 have been gold. So there you go. I, I guess I didn't teach you anything since you knew the answer, but hopefully some of our spectators learned something new today. And just a few minutes uh, till our next race here. Next up, we have two heats of the women's K4 500 meter, and then three heats of the men's K4 500. The K4s are the fastest boats you will see on the lake this week. Always a fan favorite, of course. And we will begin with the women's event. Yes, yeah, so a world champion from last year, Belarus, and Olympic champion, Hungary. And so we'll have the chance to see some, some new crews here as well as the, we start the new um, Olympic cycle um, in this 500 meter K4 women's event. So seven boats here in this first heat of the women's K4 500 meter set to set, set to start in about three minutes um, from the 500 meter um, start line. Um, we'll have in lane one a strong crew from Mexico with a lot of international experience in Pan American Games silver medalist. Um, Mexico's Isabel Romero, Karina Alanis, Beatriz Briones, and Marciela Montemayor. In lane two, a new crew from Italy who hasn't raced this event as much in the last few years. A variety of background for these different athletes, including a world-class marathon paddler. Um, Mathilde Rosa, Susanna Sicali, Cristiana Petraccia, Agata Fantini from Italy. In lane three, the Canadian crew, a new crew this year with representative from Rito, Chima, Trois-Rivières, um, finalists at both World Cups earlier this year and on a great trajectory in this new Olympic quad. They'll be fighting for a strong result as they continue to build towards qualification in Paris. Canada's Natalie Davison, Adrian Langlois, Riley Mel Melanson, and Toshka Herbaka. In lane four, a new crew from Australia after a seven plate finish at the Olympics last year, fifth earlier this year in Rochitze and fourth in Poznan. Australia's Elisa Bull, Ella Bayer, Alexandra Clark and Yale Stenipris. In lane five, bronze medalist at the Tokyo Olympic Games and fourth at the World Championship last year, this crew has won both World Cups earlier this year on fire and really coming into great form um, heading into these World Championships. Um, Poland's Anna Polaska, Karolina Naha, Adriana Kakol, and Dominika Puto. 
In lane six, silver earlier this year in Rachitse, this crew also features Teresa Portela, a six-time Olympian and silver medalist in K1-200 in Tokyo, Spain's Carolina Garcia, Sara Usande, Laia Pilak, and Teresa Portela. And in lane seven, different crews from last year's Olympic sixth place finishing crew, but won bronze earlier this year at the Rachitse World Cup in the Czech Republic, of China's Yuan Sun, Nan Wang, Luan Yang, and Lingya Chen. So again, very, very strong field here as uh, we're getting set to start this first heat of the women's K4 500 meters. Um, as a reminder, top three will go directly to the final. The other boats will be heading to a semi-final um, with the hopes to join um, the top three finisher as they compete for the gold medal here in this event of the World Championship on, on Lake Bonham. Again, lane one, Mexico, lane two, Italy, lane three, Canada, lane four, Australia, lane five, Poland, lane six, Spain, and lane seven, China. And we're underway here and just off the line, really strong start from Poland and Italy just as they jump off the gun here. Nice shot of the Canadian here as they're really powering through and coming together in the first half of this race. Really strong results earlier this year, so we're expecting a lot from this crew as they're making their debut together at the World Championship. Powerful stroke from the Polish crew. Lots of experience here from these athletes, um, having won some world medals, some Olympic medals. So expecting them to do very well here as they're contending um, for a direct spot to see a game And approaching the halfway point here, um, it does look like a pretty close race. It does look like Poland is a slight lead over Australia and then Spain. And um, Italy came a close third, uh, close ball by the moment. Top three will advance to the final, so we want to see some a really strong second half here as they try to lock up those top three places. Approaching the last hundred meters here, you'll see those uh, those red buoys signifying the last hundred again. Where that's where people try to make their last move here as they try to close those those top three. But Poland in a commanding lead here with uh, Spain and, uh, and Australia. Um, in the top three positions at the moment. Um, but China mounting a late charge here, trying to come with, with, the, with the bronze result, or uh, third place result, sorry, here in, the, in this first game. Really close race here in, the, in this um, first heat. Does look like Poland did take the, the, the win with uh, Spain and Australia in second, and then Mexico actually having a great second half here and coming in in the fourth place, just in front of China. Great start here from uh, all the crews here, really clean, uh, that's what you want to see. Um, the Canadians coming together, really getting the jitters off this first race. Racing on, on home waters is great, it gives you a lot of energy, but it also can make you tighten up a little bit. So just having that uh, out of the way now, and then they'll be refocusing, but really looking good as they approach the 200 meters here. But uh, some of the top crews, as we'd expect, have advanced and been continuing uh, to make their, their push for the World Championship title. Just the amount of synchronicity that goes into this race, you can really see it in this, these close-ups here right down to the second. Okay, what does the I think So very close here for second place um, between Spain and Australia. It does look like Spain did edge out Australia just a little bit and then close for that fourth position between China and, and Mexico. Okay, I'm going to go up there in a minute. I just know... So a little bit of relief here, I think, on the faces of the Polish athletes. They know they've got the potential to take this win at this championship, but to just getting the first the first job done, moving into the A final. So congratulations to these four women. They'll be uh, moving on and competing for the, the gold medal a little bit later this week. And we do have confirmation of the results here. So Poland taking the win in a 134. Um, and followed by Spain and Australia, so those three crews will advance. Uh, Mexico, China, Italy, and Canada will move on to the semi-final um, to try to vie for a spot in the A-finals a little bit later. And we do have one more heat to go in the women's K4. Uh, follow, that will be followed by the men's K4 heats. So I will let you take it away, PL, at the start line. Thank you. 
very much. So again, eight boats here in this race, uh, almost a full field um, in lane one. So the, the U.S. has not necessarily consistently entered a K4, but great to see here veterans of the team um, lead this quartet. So we have from the United States, Kaylee Wilding, Elena Walgamont, Emma McDonald, and Kaylin McElroy. In lane two, fifth place in Poznan earlier this year, a, a good rebound year after failing to qualify for Tokyo. Lots of experience in this boat, including two Tokyo Olympians, Great Britain, Emma Russell, Deborah, Deborah Kerr, Emily Lewis, and Rebecca Simon. In lane three, Germany, fifth place last year in Tokyo, bringing a new crew this year to these championship. Germany, as we heard a little bit earlier, long, long history at the World Championship, but especially in this event, and always a, a strong contender for a medal. So Germany's Caroline Arft, Lena Rollings, Pauline Piax, Katarina Diedrich in lane three. In lane four, Denmark was eighth last year at the Tokyo Olympics and seventh at the World Championships, sixth in Poznan at the World Cup earlier this year. Um, Bolette Iversen, Farike Matisen, Pernil Knudsen, and Sarah Mildes from Denmark. In lane five, fourth place at the Olympics last year, a little bit different crew this year, but silver in Poznan earlier. Uh, this crew does include Lisa Carrington, the five-time Olympic champions from New Zealand, Alicia Hoskin, Lisa Carrington, Olivia Breck, and Tara Allen. In lane six, Czech Republic was eighth last year at the World Championship, also eighth earlier this year in Poznan and 13 in Rochice on the World Cup scene. Um, Katarina Zarubova, Barbora Bedlatkova, Stepanka Sobiskova, and Adela Hazova. In lane seven, new crew here for Hungary with only Alita Gatso returning from last year's silver medal crew at the Tokyo Olympics. Um, Hungary is the defending Olympic champion and always has an extremely strong women's kayak program, so certainly a crew to watch here this week. And then finally in lane eight, the finalist from this year, Rachitse, um, will be looking for a, really a, a personal best here to advance directly. The Netherlands, uh, Wies Sifas, Selma Konichen, Kitty Proper, and Anamus. And we have a start here in the second heat of the women's K4 500 meters. Again, top three advancing directly to the final. So we'll be expecting some of those top boats to make a really big push as they get going here. Nice shot of Hungary. I'm really powering through as they're going um, through the first half of this race. Uh, one of the crews to watch for sure in this event. And approaching the first 200 meters here this race, does look like um, New Zealand, Hungary, and, and Germany are making a push here um, for this, um, this, the top three spots as we're going through. But lots of racing still to go as we're uh, completing this uh, second heat of the game for 500 meters. So again, as we got to the halfway point, New Zealand in the first place, followed by Germany, and then Denmark, and Hungary a little bit off the pace here, um, off the top three as we're getting going. So close race for four crews here. Um, again, the top three advancing directly to the A final, so lots on the line. It does look like we have a strong push here in the second half of the environmental gap with Denmark, but Germany and Denmark in a close fight for that third place. And very, very tight uh, between those uh, those three crews here as they'll try to close one of those top three spots. It does look like New Zealand have a slight edge as we're heading into the last few meters. What a close finish here for second and third and fourth. Um, great win here from New Zealand, um, taking first place in that second heat, um, and, and, and strong performance here from those athletes. And you would expect that from a, from a crew with that much experience and then coming together here uh, at these championships. Very, very close for second, third, and fourth, so we'll have to wait for confirmation of the results to know who's advancing directly to this A final versus having to compete in the next. So as we approach the 200 meter here, really clear commanding lead by New Zealand, but very, very tight as we mentioned for, for third, fourth, and fifth um, between Hungary, Denmark, and Germany. Um, in the last 100 meters, very, very tight as well. It's a strong push at the end, trying to really keep the momentum going and then trying to close those top three places. Okay. 
does look like New Zealand and Germany and then Hungary, Denmark is falling short a little bit in the last few strokes, but they'll be one of the crews to watch in the semi-finals. Um, and really good showing from Great Britain as well, um, right there in the mix as well. So it should be an interesting semi-final later this, um, this week um, with the, the top three in that race. We'll be joining these six crews that will already have advanced to the A final. So we'll just wait for confirmation of those results, and then uh, and there you go. New Zealand taking the win at a 136.7, um, followed by Germany and then Hungary. So they'll be joining um, the crews from the first heat into the A final, and then we'll have a semi final to decide the the last three positions that will be making up the full field for this A final of the women's K4. Thanks for that, PL, and we are moving now to the men's K for 500 meter heats. Before we do, a word about a partnership that's really important to Canoe 22. The North American Indigenous Games are taking place in Chibuktuk, Dartmouth, and Millbrook First Nation in July 2023. Those games will bring together 756 Indigenous nations to celebrate, share, and reconnect through sport and culture. You can find out more at NAIG2023.com. And we have the start list here for the, the men's K4 500 meters, three heats in this event, so only the winner will advance directly to the A final. Um, in lane one, the 2019 World Championship appearance in this event, um, expecting to have progressed a little bit more in this event and really continuing to develop. Tajikistan, Abu Sador, Gafurov, Zoyev, John Nabiev, Tohir, Nuru Muhammadi, and Manu Cher Bayozo. In lane two, represented Japan at last year's Tokyo Olympic Games. This event, semi-finalist earlier this year in Poznan, Japan's Keiji Mizumoto, Momotaro Matsushita, Taishi Tanada, and Seiji Kamatsu. In lane three, fourth in the B final last year at home in Copenhagen at the World Championships, finalist in Poznan earlier this year, just missed the B final in Rachitze. Victor Asmur, Rasmus Knudsen, Morten Graversen, and Magnus Siversen from Denmark. Lane four, the Tokyo 2020 silver medalist and 2021 seventh place finisher at the World Championships, gold in Rachitze earlier this year. Spain's Sol Cravioto, Carlos Arevalo, Marcus Cooper, and Rodrigo Germade. In lane five, the 2021 world champion, gold in Poznan, and second in Rachitze, so in really good form this year, Ukraine's Dmitro Dani Lekko, Ole Kiwarik, Igor Trunov, and Ivan Semikin. In lane six, 2021 fifth place at the world championships and bronze in Rachitze earlier this year, Simonas Maldonis, Mindogas Maldonis, Ignas Navakaskas, and Artur Serra are from Lithuania. Lane 7, the 2021 World Championships finalist in 7th in Tokyo. Hungary's Istvan Kudi, Kolos Chismaria, Ardam Varga, and Ben Tinadas. And in lane 8, um, from the United States, Miles Wither, Aaron Small, Jesse Lischuk, and Nathaniel Ares. So strong start here from the Ukrainian, the Spanish, and um, and and the Lithuanian. You'd expect the Lithuanian to have a really strong start, comprised of a crew of a lot of 200-meter two, of sprinters, and, and they're known for their speed. Um, but it will be a, a really, really big fight here between um, Spain and Hungary, crews that have been sharing the podium in this event a lot over the last few years. And as we're approaching the halfway point here, it does look like Spain, Ukraine, and then Hungary on the outside. Um, coming for the top three calls in Japan coming in for that And you do, even if you're in the top three, to have a strong performance in the, here in the heats. There's a bit of psychological side to things of, of claiming um, a, a good spot, but also putting down a good time practicing your race plan and getting a good lane for the final. So head-to-head -head here between Spain and, and Ukraine um, for that top position as we enter the last 100 meters. Clear win here, about half a boat here for Spain over Ukraine, and then followed by Hungary as the top three position here in this first heat of the men's K4, 500 meters. So um, first place will be advancing directly. Um, so again, very, very important to take this win. So Spain will be moving directly to the A final. And not surprising given the pedigree of this crew. So 
a little bit of a better start here for Spain over Ukraine, and that might have been what made the difference in the end, just a few meters in this really close race. So, um, great to see all these athletes um, competing here on the lake, but Ukraine making a strong push halfway as we get to the 200. It was neck and neck, a few centimeters, and Spain just managed to pull away a little bit um, in the closing stages of this race. And I'm sure we'll see them celebrating as we get to uh, the finish line again here because, as you said, uh, Spain here going straight to the final uh, once we get that final confirmation of the results, um, saving them that extra race, right? Race for the finals. Yeah, and it does make a big difference. Remember, these athletes will be racing other events as well. Um, so taking one out will mean extra recovery time and just allow people to, to refocus and, and reduce the load and the time they have to spend in the water, especially in the, the weather that we expect, really warm weather over the week. So uh, just being able to rest, recover, and then stay in the shade a little bit more. Here are the results, so confirmation of uh, the, the win here by Spain in a 121.6 will advance directly. Um, the other crews will be moving on to the semi-final. Um, the crew from Tajikistan sadly did not take the start in our uh, in this first heat for the K4500. So we'll be looking at the times in the second and third heat here to get a bit of a comparison of who the early favorites are in this event um, as we get ready to go here in the second heat of the men's K4500 meters. And we'll have in, in lane two, um, 15th last year at the World Championship, continuing to build their men's program. Um, this crew was in the semifinal in Rachitse earlier this year. Um, Trevor Thompson, Thomas Lusti, um, Noah Dembele, and Lewis Fletcher from Great Britain. In lane three, a new crew that is replacing um, the sixth place finisher from the Tokyo Olympics last year, eighth in Rachitse earlier, so we'll be looking to live up to Australia's strong reputation in K4. I have Pierre Westhusen, Fletcher Armstrong, Jackson Collins, and Noah Hubbard from Australia. In lane four, the defending Olympic champion and multiple times world champion. They should be one of the favorites after a really strong showing on the World Cup circuit this year with a silver in Poznan and fourth in Rachitse. Max Retschmidt, Tom Liebscher, Jacob Schaff, and Max Lemke from Germany. In lane five, Slovakia, um, bronze medalist in Tokyo in 2021, world silver medalist, rich history in K4, and have started the year really strong with a seventh place in Rachitze and Poznan. Samuel Balac, Denis Mishak, Saba Zalka, and Adam Botak from Slovakia. In lane Six, uh, 12th place at the World Championship last year, bronze in Poznan earlier this year, and finalist in Rachitse. Um, Guillaume Berger, Maxime Beaumont, Kylian Koch, and Guillaume de Corchemont from France. In lane seven, uh, America's representative in the 2016 Olympics in Rio and defending Pan Am Games champion. That men's program has continued to develop quite a bit, and we've seen great results over the last year, including Augustin Rodriguez's eighth place finish last year at the Tokyo Olympics. Argentina's Juan Caceres, Gonzalo Benassi, Gonzalo Carreras, and Agustin Rodriguez. And in lane eight, third at the 2019 Pan Am Games and looking to build on a strong result, Mexico's Alberto Fragosa, Carlos Morales, Jose Alcazar, and Osvaldo Fuentes. And we do have a start here in the second heat. Again, winner will go directly to the A final, so lots on the line in this race. Expecting some really, really strong start from Australia, Germany, and Slovakia. Um, in this event. You can recognize Germany really easily in their typical um, pink boat out there on the line, um, really national team colors and, and, and all that, but it looks like a really strong start from Slovakia here, um, really controlling the pace in this first half, but we'll expect Germany to really make a strong push as we approach the, the 250, and it does look like Germany did take the lead with Slovakia and then France coming in third place at the moment.
and approaching the last 100 meters entering the red buoys here. It does look like a fight between Germany and Slovakia for the win. Um, really coming back, so we're seeing Slovakia make a really strong push here in the last few meters. Um, we'll see if it's enough to overtake Germany in the last few, few meters here as we're approaching the closeout of this race in the second heat. And so close, oh wow. my god, too close to call here between the two of them for a direct entry into the, the A final in this men's K4 um, between Germany and Slovakia. So we'll have to wait for the replay and then the photo finish between those two crews, but great racing here in this uh, heat of the, the men's K4. Oh my gosh, yeah, no kidding. My heart is pounding for them. I, you can tell no one wants to get too excited. <laughs> Just it, waiting. It does look replay. like the Germany may have managed to stay uh, oh, in front of Slovakia. We'll have to wait for the, the times between those two crews, but really, really close. We'll wait for the official confirmation um, before really announcing that as a, con as a confirmed result. But great start here from all these crews. You can see lots of powers. These boats are really heavy, and it takes a lot of energy to get them off the, off the water and then uh, up to the, the travel speed. How heavy are we talking here, Yeah. For the boats. Uh, well, trivia question we'll answer later, maybe. <laughs> so K4s are, I, I believe, just under 30 kilos. Um, uh, I'm a canoeer myself, so know those weights more offhand, but certainly uh, heavier than, uh, than, than a number of these other boats out there. And then uh, they'll, yeah, so he heavy enough that it takes a lot of energy yeah, to get them tell, off. Yeah. But yeah, so great to see. Germany had a bit of a lead, saw Slovakia come back in the second half, so may have spent a bit too much energy in, in the little bit. So I'm sure they'll regroup and talk about their race plan and, and then confirm how we go. But in the slow motion replay here, does look like Germany by a few centimeters uh, did take this win over Slovakia. So Germany will be joining Spain here directly into the A final. Um, those two crews, long history of raging each other. Um, so I'm sure they're all expecting uh, a big showdown a little bit later this week in that A final. Yeah, absolutely. The sheer number of athletes competing in this event is really a testament to how popular it is. Um, and we are heading into hey Heat 3 now. This heat features our Canadian crew as well. Yeah, and, and we saw just between Germany and Slovakia, 0.04. So again, extremely wow. close um, between those two crews to make it into the A final. And yes, as we move into the, the third heat taking place in just a few minutes, um, we'll have um, seven votes again um, competing here. Top spot will be making um, the A final directly. Um, in lane two, we'll have the 11th position um, finishers from 2019 and third in the B final in Richice earlier this year, um, including Olympians um, Manfredi Risa, who's a silver medalist in K1 200 in Tokyo, um, Italy's Andrea Scherrera, Nicola Ripamonti, Tommaso Cresci, and Manfredi Risa. In lane three, tenth plate finisher at last year's World Championships, sixth in Poznan earlier this year, um, Jakub Stepun, Bartosz Grabowski, Slavomir Witkacz, and Jakub Mikalski from Poland. In lane four, our Canadian crew, so building on their experience in Tokyo last year, this crew is really impressed since it started to race together. Sixth at last year's World Championship, double finalist this year on the World Cup circuits, representatives from the Balmy Beach Canoe Club, Club de Canatage de Lac Beauport, Club de Canatage de Trois Rivières, and the Mississauga Canoe Club, Nick Matvive, Pierre Le Coulin, Laurent Laving, and Simon McTavish from Canada. In lane five, bronze medalist at last year's World Championships, fifth in Richice and eighth in Poznan, Jakub Spika, Radek Sluf, Jakub Zavrel, and Daniel Havel from Czech Republic. In lane six, eighth at last year's Olympic Games and 11 at the World Championships, includes the 2021 World Silver Medalist in K1 500, Paul Ribeiro, Messia Baptista, Emmanuel Silva, and David Varela from Portugal. In lane seven, B finalists from Poznan earlier this year and building from a large World Cup team as they're continuing to build their men's program. New Zealand's Benjamin Duffy, Harnish, um, Hamish Legard, James Munro, and Zach Perkins. And in lane eight, a fairly not young crew that we haven't seen on the international circuit too much this year um, includes a lot of members of Singapore's Canoe Marathon World Championship, Weitao, Tekko, Jovi, Kalechelvan, and Zanteo from Singapore.
once again, winner will go directly to the A final, joining Germany and Spain, who have already qualified. And we do have a start here in the third heat of the men's K4 at 500 meters, expecting a really strong start from Canada, Poland, and, and Italy as they're going through. Czech will be one of the crews to watch here as they were bronze medalists last year in this event. And a lot and a lot of power coming through as they're uh, doing this one minute, 20 second or so race um, here in Dartmouth. It does look like a really strong start from the Polish crew here, taking an early lead as we get to the 250 meters, followed by Canada and the Czech Republic. Um, strong, strong second half as we're approaching the, the last 200 meters here. Um, a lot of the crews will be trying to pick up the rate and make a move as they um, contend for the top spot here in this third heat. And approaching the last 100 meters, it does look like Poland is still holding the lead, but the Czech Republic coming on extremely strong. Done. And again, a very, very close finish. It does look like Poland matches us to hold off um, the Czech Republic, and we'll be moving on directly to the A final, joining Spain and Germany um, for that gold medal a little bit later this week. You can see the excitement from the crew. Again, men's K4 is an extremely competitive event, so just being able to skip the semifinal, getting a great lane in the middle, uh, being identified as one of the favorites makes a huge difference. So congratulations to Poland here. Solid race to take the win in this third heat of the men's K4. throughout this race, able to build a really strong lead up to the 200 and the 250, um, and just managed to hold on the Czech Republic, who were charging really, really strong in the last 200 meters. And from our position here at PL, we certainly heard the hometown crowd uh, cheering on Team Canada, and they will get uh, a chance to do that again as uh, the Canadian team likely moving on to the semifinal. We'll just confirm that when we get the results here. Yeah, great racing from the Canadian crew. We know they have uh, an A final potential, so we'll be looking forward to the, those guys regrouping and coming back after a fourth place finish here. So do, do we do have confirmation of Poland um, as win, followed by Czech Republic and Portugal. Canada in a very strong fourth position, and we'll be looking for a top three finish um, in the, the semifinals um, that will take place later this week to join those three crews that have already qualified for the A final. And we're going to move from kayak back to canoe now. Next up, we have heats in the men's and women's C2 500 meter event. As we take you to the start line, we would like to thank our sponsors, Sport Canada, the province of Nova Scotia, and the Halifax Regional Municipality for making this event possible. And we'll have two heats of the women's C2 500. Again, this event just started in the Olympics last year. So a lot of new champions that were made. Um, great to see the women's canoeing um, enter the Olympic program as well. And then we'll have some representatives from those games um, here on the line today. Um, in lane one, a combination that includes a top 10 finisher in C1 200 and 500 at Junior Worlds last year and the 2019 C1 200 and 500 U23 World Championship semifinalists from Mexico, Nicole Guzman and Lucero Mendoza. In lane two, 10th last year at the World Championships and winner of the B finals in Tokyo last year. It's a new combination this year with Paula Gomez replacing Maria Mallard, um, Chile's Paula Gomez and Karen Rocco. In lane three, new combination from last year again with Axel Renard re replacing Laura Ruiz, seventh at Poznan earlier this year, and we'll be looking for a strong result in this race. France, Axel Renard and Eugenie d'Orange. In lane four, um, Canada's Katie Vincent and Sloane McKenzie. Canada did win bronze last year at the Tokyo Olympics with Katie and Laurence, but after Laurence's retirement, Sloane came in and, and stepped in and great results earlier this year on the World Cup. 
um, circuit, and Katie is the defending world champion in C1-200. Representing the Mississauga Canoe Club and the Chima Aquatic Club, Katie Vincent and Sloan McKenzie. In lane five, sixth at the Olympics last year in bronze at the World Championships, silver in Rachitse and gold in Poznan, um, Cuba's Iradis Ledis Dubois and Catherine Segura. In lane six, fifth last year in Tokyo, but new crew here racing the 500. Bronze medalist in the C2-200 last year in Copenhagen and third in Rachitse the last year, Giara Bragato and Bianca Nagy from Hungary. In lane seven, eighth in Copenhagen last year, a different crew this year, but the, we, that it does include the 2021 Junior World Championships fourth place finisher, Spain's Maria Moreno and Maria Prats. And in lane eight, um, finishers from the 2021 U23 um, World Championships and a lot of international experience from the United States, Azusa Murphy and Andrea Gizilla. And we have a start here in the first heat of the women's C2 500 meters. Again, top three heading directly to the A final. Nice shot of the Canadians here, just heading off the line. Great start um, from Sloan and Katie. The Cubans really, really strong and really fast paddlers. Lots of international World Cup medals and great showing last year at the Olympics in Tokyo. Close start here as we're approaching the first 200 meters of this race. We have a slight headwind today, so times will be a little bit slower than, than expected, but it does look like Cuba is a slight lead over um, France and Canada here as we are approaching the 250 meter uh, spot into this race. Hungary in the mix as well as we're uh, completing this first heat of the C2500. Again, Cuba, then Hungary, and Canada have the halfway point. During the last 200 meters, it does look like Cuba have a bit of a lead over Canada and then Hungary. France sticking into um, the race and really trying to have a strong finish here to earn one of those top three spots. And you can see Cuba's fast stroke rate just continuing to be light onto the paddle, generating some good power and glide versus Hungary and Canada. A little bit slower stroke rate, a little bit more power as we're entering the last 100 meter of this race. France continuing to push here and trying to make a, a push for the that third spot as they would like to qualify directly for the A final. does look like Cuba taking the win and then very, very close between Hungary, France and Canada. So we'll have to wait for the official result to, to see who's advancing directly to the A final. But great race here from, from Cuba's um, Dubois and Segura. Um, great showing from them, uh, building on some great results from last year and earlier this year at the World Cups. Yeah, lots of relief on their faces there. You can see at the finish line. Yeah, and a number of these athletes will also be racing uh, next week at the Pan American Championships here to qualify for the Pan American Games. So expecting this crew to be one of those contenders um, to try to qualify for the Santiago 2023 Games as well. Some of these close-ups really give you an idea of just how much full body strength goes into this. Look at that. And great glide here. You can see the Hungarians really driving those legs and getting a lot of um, a lot of power and a lot of glide in their boat. And Cuba, really high rhythm, good cadence, very together, and ensuring that that boat just continuously has some good glide as we're as they were driving throughout the 500. France just never giving up here and really able to have those last few strokes. It does look like they may have been able to come in in second place. So moving from fourth to second in a matter of 200 meters, and it looks like Hungary may have been just edged Canada out of the direct to the A final. So Canada may have to move to the semifinal here to qualify for this event. Oh, it certainly was close at the end there. 
So we'll wait for confirmation of the official results. But great to see that uh, high five from Cuba celebrating the win and advancing directly to the final here. And we do have confirmation of those results. So 202 for Cuba's um, crew, followed by France and then Hungary, Canada, very close, 0.04 again. Um, we'll have to go to the semi-final to earn a spot into the A final later this week. We look forward to seeing Katie Vincent and Sloane McKenzie uh, compete in that semi-final. And we do have one more heat to go here in the women's C2 500. That will be followed by three heats for the men. Lake Bunuk may just be the only race course with two finish lines at this event. There's the one we're positioned at here. Uh, but just up the road behind us, you'll find the finish line, our beverage and entertainment area, which wouldn't be the same without our partners, Nine Locks, Lake City Cider, and Cold Stream Distillery. So from the finish lines to the starting line, over to you, PL. Thanks, Priya. Um, and yeah, so in this uh, second race, so again, top three in this event will move directly to the A final, and then everybody else will go to the, the semi. Um, in lane two, we have a younger crew representing Great Britain this week, semi finalists at last year's World Championship um, Bethany Gill and Afton Fitzhenry from Great Britain. In lane three, the defending Olympic champions, winner of the Richitze World Cup earlier this year, and definitely one of the favorites this week, and Chixiao Tu and Mengia Sun from China. In lane four, fifth place at last year's champion, World Championship, Silver in Poznan earlier this year at the World Cup, um, Sylvia Czekicowinska and Julia Wodzak from Poland. In lane five, the defending world champion and Tokyo silver medalist, fourth place earlier this year, and Lyudmila Luzan is also the Tokyo bronze medalist in C1-200. From Ukraine, Lyudmila Luzan and Anastasia Shetvirikova. In lane six, fourth place in Tokyo last year, bronze in Poznan and another contender in the A final, Germany's Lisa Jan and Sofia Koch. In lane seven, seventh in Tokyo last year in the 2021 World Championships finalist in Copenhagen, from Moldova, Daniela Kochu and Maria, Maria Olarasu. And in lane eight, not taking the start from India this, today, so we will and we do have a start here in the second heat of the women's C2 500 meters. Again, top three advancing directly to the A final. So a lot on the line here for these athletes. And great shot here of the double right C2 from Ukraine. Um, really starting and generating a lot of power. That crew's a lot of experience um, doing quite well last year in Tokyo, coming in second place. Expecting a really fast start here from the Ukrainian and the Chinese crew. Lots of experience on the podium last year at the Olympics um, in the first time that this event was contested. Um, great to see these women back here this year and, and competing on, the, on Lake Banuk um, for these championships. And as expected, really seeing China stretch a bit of a lead here in the first half of this race. They're really fast starters and a really, really strong crew. Um, about a full boat now um, over Germany and Ukraine as they get through the midway point into this race, followed by Moldova in fourth place that will be trying to make a, a strong push here to earn a top three spot uh, to move directly to the A final. China just continuing to keep a really strong rate and driving that boat and, and harnessing as much glide as possible as they're entering the last 100 meter of this race. Um, Ukraine and Germany continuing to push for those three spots, but Moldova not giving up and continuing to raise the rate here as they enter the last 100 meters. convincing performance here from China and then Ukraine and Germany joining them here in the A final um, as we close out the second heat of the, un the, the women's C2 500 meters. Um, top time overall um, about five seconds faster than the first heat so we'll be looking for China to, to be one of the contenders for the gold medal a little bit later in the A final. Certainly one of many exciting finals that we have to look forward to later this week. And great start. Lots of power from lane five here. Ukraine um, getting off the line really quickly.
but China in control throughout the race at the 200 meters, a full boat ahead of Germany and Ukraine. And those three boats really a class of the field here in this first heat, uh, second heat of the of the women's C2 500. Great win here from China, the defending Olympic champions, and in second place, um, Ukraine, silver medalist in Tokyo. So again, those two crew, lots of experience, lots of international experience. You'd expect to see them um, towards the front um, in this event. We have the results here from the women's C2 500 meter second heat. So confirmation of China's win followed by Ukraine and Germany. And those three crews will advance directly to the A final, um, contesting the gold medal um, in this event. And it is the men's turn to take the course now. We have three heats now of men's C2 500 meter heats with the Canadian crew in heat one getting set at the start line. This is the new Olympic distance as C2 was competed over 1,000 meters in Tokyo, but it will be a 500 meter in Paris. Yeah, so big change for a number of these athletes. That change actually happened um, before the Tokyo Olympics were contested. But the world, so the World Championships last year in Copenhagen, the 500 was the main distance as it was uh, kind of starting the new cycle towards the Paris Olympics. So we saw a lot of the 1,000 meter crew make the move down to the 500 last year, the World Championships. And we'll see a number of these crews um, on the water here today. So in lane two, um, we have Demenov, from who's Tajikistan's top senior canoeer, and he's joined here by the uh, young 21-year-old Dilovar Rasulov. So from Tajikistan, Rasulov and Demenov. In, in lane three, um, from Canada, semi-finalists last year at the World Championships, B finalists at World Cups earlier this year, gaining a lot of experience and speed, and that this crew could actually cause a surprise on this lake. From Sakawa and La Coupal, Tyler Laidla and Alex Planter from Canada. In lane four, um, Adrian is a fourth place finisher from last year in Tokyo in C1000. Um, this crew was seventh last year at the World Championship and has been racing together for a few years and posting a lot of strong results from France, Loïc Léonard and Adrien Barthes. In lane five, seventh last in Tokyo over the 1,000 meter distance and fourth at the World Championship over for the 500. Fifth place earlier in Rachitze, Viktor Glazunov and Tomasz Barniak from Poland. In lane six, Olympic bronze medalist from the C2000 last year, um, from Germany, Sebastian Brendel and Tim Hecker. In lane seven, uh, the Tarnowski brothers, including Sergei Tarnowski, bronze medalist in the C1000 last year in Tokyo, from Moldova. And in lane eight, from Mexico, Guillermo Quirino and Rigoberto Camilo, um, sixth last year at the 2021 under 23 C2000. So we have a start already in the first heat of the men's C2 500 meters. Three heats here in this race, so winners will advance directly. So lots on the line here for these crews. Um, and we'll expect really strong performance for Moldova, Pol Poland, and Germany as they contest the race here. Um, approaching the halfway point, um, it does look like Germany has a slight edge over Poland and Moldova. Canada really continuing to drive that boat, sitting in fourth place at the moment. But really close race here as we enter the last 200 meters. Poland making a move with Moldova and Germany. Very, very close um, for those three crews. And we'll see the rate come up here in the last 150 as athletes are making their finish and their finishing surge as they're trying to close this out and take the win here in this race. That's when the lactic acid is really building, so you need to really drive that boat and keep the glide. But it does look like Poland is still edging out in Germany a little bit and, and Moldova is just falling behind a little bit.
it does look like Poland here taking the win in this first heat and um, will be moving on directly to the A final, the fourth place finisher from the World Championship last year. Close racing um, between Poland and Germany and Moldova as we are going through and great showing from Canada here in this first heat as well. Great start from Poland, really jumping out into the lead right away. Lots of power from those athletes, experienced um, C2 paddlers, and lots of glide, lots of power, as you can see. Um, really generating um, a lot of speed rapidly off the line. Very, very close at the 200 meters. Poland just edging out Germany over Moldova. So all, for, it was still um, anybody's game at that point. Yeah, it certainly was close there at the midpoint just being able to continue to hold on. Germany's known for their strong finish. Um, Sebastian has had a, a lot of passing in the last few hundred meters to take wins over the last few years, but just not enough here in this 500, running out of room a little bit to take over Poland. confirmation of the results here in the first heat of the C2 500 meters Poland taking the win Viktor Glazunov and Tomasz Farniak um, advancing directly to the A final in a 142.75 um, the rest of the crews will be moving on to the semifinals um, to vie for a spot in that A final and still one more heat to go here of the men's C2 500 meter event. And just ahead of that, a big thank you to the village shops at Dartmouth Crossing. They have provided parking solutions for both volunteers and spectators. Yep. And in the second heat of three, um, we have some great crews again. Um, in lane three, Olympic champions in the thousand meter distance. Um, from Cuba, Sergei Madrigal and Taviani Alvarez. Um, Alvarez repla replacing Fernando Jorge Enriquez this year. So new crew here for Cuba. In lane four, fifth place at the 2021 World Championship in silver in Poznan earlier this year. Part of the last year's World Champion winning crew in C4 500. Vitaly Vergeles and Andrei Rybachuk from Ukraine. In lane five, 2021 world champion in this event and bronze earlier this year in Rachitze. Lots of international experience in world championship medals. Um, Nicola Krasian and Daniele Santini from Italy. In lane six, eighth of last year's world championship in this event and B finalist in Rachitze earlier this year, Antonin Habal and Kiri Zalubil um, from the Czech Republic. In lane seven, uh, Brazil was fourth in Tokyo over the thousand meter and second in Rio with Erlen Silva, a member of that crew. Um, Felipe Vieira is now taking a, a spot into this boat and they've had a, such a strong men's canoe over the last few years and the few Olympic quads. So we're expecting Brazil to have a great showing here in this race. So in lane seven, Erlen Silva and Felipe Vieira from Brazil. Again, only the winner will be advancing directly to the A final, so expect some really great racing here between uh, all these crews, actually, that are world class level crews. So, once again, Cuba in three, Ukraine in four, Italy in five, Czech Republic in six, Brazil in seven, and India is not taking the start this morning. We have a start here, great start from uh, Ukraine, who might actually have jumped the gun a little bit here and, and caused the false start. So we'll wait to see who officially got the false start, but uh, athletes will loop back around and then uh, get reset as we uh, get underway here in the second heat of the C2 Men's 500. does look like Ukraine may have jumped the gun a little bit, very eager to get going. The start's so important in this race. Um, as you can see, the C2 500 is one of the closest event on the um, program. So yes, uh, Ukraine getting attributed a false start here in the, the second heat.
and we're just about ready to get underway here in the second heat, uh, sorry, third heat of the C2 Men's 500, second heat, um, as the athletes are just resetting after that false start attributed to Ukraine. So once again, it's Cuba in lane three, Ukraine in lane four, Italy in lane five, Czech Republic in lane six, and Brazil in lane seven. And we do have a start, looks like a clean start here. Great start from the Italians in lane five. Again, world champion last year in this event. Lots of experience as they're coming in, really looking to prove themselves as one of the top contenders this week. showing here in the first half of their 500 meters in the C2. Brazil does come out with mounting a charge here as we approach the last 200. Really, really close between uh, three crews that are chasing down the Italians at this moment. Entering the last 100 meters, it does look like the Italians still have the lead by about half a boat, um, followed by Brazil and Ukraine. Um, first going directly to the final here, some, some crews may decide to actually save some energy at this point for the semi-final, but really strong showing here by the Italians, putting um, a stamp on, on this race and really showing that they're one of the favorites to, to win it all this week. But Brazil coming in pretty close here in the second place, again, that new crew um, from last year, and then uh, in third between Czech and Cuba. Ukraine rounding out the field here in the, the second heat, but a great win here by um, Prussian and Santini from Italy. So, yeah, certainly a dominant win uh, by the Italians there. And as you said, some of the uh, other athletes uh, just letting up a little bit towards the end there. You're right, they're gonna have to save their energy now for those semifinals, which we can expect over the next couple of days. Yeah, and great racing. C2 is a very difficult event. Um, the 500, a tough distance. So I think a number of the athletes would say the 500 is the hardest. It's a big mix between sprinting and a little bit more endurance. So certainly burns and hurts the most. So I think we'll we'll hear that commentary a lot, a lot from athletes when you ask them about um, which distance is the hardest. Um, certainly they all have their different um, particularities, but the 500 is one of the ones that we hear the most around uh, pain in a number of cases. But yeah, great shot of the Italians um, closing out this race. Lots of powers. Those guys are extremely strong and, and have found a way to make that boat go very, very fast. Just while we're waiting for the final uh, results here, it's a good time to let everyone around the lake know that the entertainment won't stop. It will just move to the main stage over the lunch break with our first up performances brought to you by RBCX Music. So at 1.30, Harms will be sharing his hip hop and R&B vibes. RBCX Music provides a platform for emerging Canadian artists to showcase their music, share their stories, and reach new fans. Thanks, Priya. And we do have a confirmation of the results. Again, a 142 again in this race, so really close results between heats. Um, Italy advancing directly to the A final, um, and the other boats will be moving to the semifinals um, to gain a spot in that final. And we do have one more C2 heat coming up before we return to singles competition with five packed heats of men's K1 500 meter, uh, plus a BL1 men's semifinal before we break for lunch. So I'll pass it back over to you, Phil. Yeah, and crews are already on the lines. We'll go fairly quickly here, but uh, in that lane, well, Peru not taking the start. Hungary in lane three, um, 2021 and 2019 world silver medalist Jonathan Hachu and Adam Fikete. In lane four, Henrik Zatostas and Vadim Korobov, 200 meter specialist pairing up from Lithuania. Lane five, Cayeto Garcia and Pablo Martinez, finalists in Tokyo over the thousand meters and Final and finalist in the 500 last year, the World Championship from Spain. Lane six, um, Hao Liu and Bowen Ji from China. Lane seven, Ryo Nagamunuma and Shuhei Hosumi from Japan. And in lane eight, Alejandro Ramirez and Daniel Sipagota from Colombia. 
So Spain has had a really strong start to this season, um, coming 1-2 actually in Ricice in this event, so really deep men's program. They've always been really, really good at 500, so exciting to see what they can do this week. And expecting a, a lot of speeds from the Chinese crew. China has also been one of those programs where they've had an incredible international C2 um, results, um, in, including a, a win in 2008 when this event was on the Olympic program again. So halfway through, does look like China over Spain. Um, Spain's our strong finisher, so expecting them to really mount the challenge here. But China commanding um, lead, but Spain has just picked up the rate drastically here, really pushing to get that win as we're coming through. And China is responding accordingly, but it's looking really, really close between those two crews as we're approaching the last 50 meters here in this race. It does look like Spain might be coming in and putting a little bit of a challenge here and over China, but it's definitely between these two boats as we're approaching the last few strokes. And it does look like Spain has managed to gain the edge here and take this win in the third heat. And then Lithuania coming in in third place. And there's Cayetano Garcia and uh, Pablo Martinez from Spain taking the, the third automatic qualifying spot here in this third heat of the men's C2 500 meters. So they'll join um, our, our other crews that have already qualified from Italy and from Poland into the A final. Nice shot. You can see that in the second half, these, these two athletes managed to really increase the rate because you can um, really about half a boat behind uh, with 200 meters to go and managed to gain a full boat to jump in front of the Chinese crew um, in, in just the 200 meter um, span. So great showing here. Lots of power, lots of rate. Um, so there'll be a crew to watch this uh, week for uh, a medal here at these championships. Absolutely, and I'm sure um, we'll get to see some of their big smiles again here at the end because uh, now they're going straight to the final, which uh, is great news for them. Um, and huge congratulations uh, to Spain on that performance there. Yeah, you can see those two athletes <laughs> completely spent, but also yeah. really happy to take that There's win. There's the smile. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, So we'll wait for confirmation again. Uh, fastest time here so far in this event by Spain, 141.18, and the other two winners were 142. So we'll expect those three crews to be uh, contending for some of the medals um, later this week in the C2 500 meter event. Again, the Olympic distance now on the Paris program. And as we head into men's K1 500 meter heats, a reminder to follow at canoe underscore 22 on your social media for all of the latest event news. And you can use the, the hashtag canoe 22 on your posts. Also visit canoe, visit canoe2022.com and there you can sign up to follow your favorite athletes races. And so we'll get ready to start in the men's K1 500 meters. Again, five heats here. So advancement will be one to five plus two six position best times will move to semifinal. Everybody else will be done for the week. So in lane one, the 21 year old newcomer to this event with some experience at the under 23 and senior level in the K1000 from Algeria, Ayub Hedra. In lane two, the junior world finalists in K1000 and K2500 last year in Portugal, stepping up to the senior ranks this year in the K1500 from Romania, Darius Zaharia. In lane three, the 26-year-old first world championship appearance from Uganda, Charles Mag Magizzi. In lane four, 11th place at the world championship last year in Denmark, lots of experience in K2 and K4 event as well, from France, Francis Muguet. In lane five, um, eighth place last year at the World Championship in the seventh and seventh earlier in this year in Rechitse. He's a veteran of the South African a team with great performances in the last few years. Um, South African Christian Kutsi. Um, in lane, actually lane five is a scratch, I believe. And in lane six, racing at the World Championship since 2013 from Finland, Jeremy Hakala. 
And in lane eight from Puerto Rico, 21-year-old and C finalist in the K1 500 of the under 23 World Championship last year, Eddie Barranco. So great start here from the middle lanes um, as we're driving through. It does look like lane four, Francis Muget, and lane six, Jeremy Hakala from Finland, are currently leading as we are approaching the halfway point of this race. So it's France, then Finland, followed by Romania again. Um, top athletes of the year, top five, will be advancing to the semifinal. Um, so we do only have four athletes here, so they'll all be advancing to the semifinal. But given positions are important still for which which semifinal you will be fighting in, so I'm certainly still still step on the line here and getting that first race of the World Championships just out and tri making sure that your race plan is working is certainly quite an important step um, as we move into the later rounds of the K1 500. So entering the last hundred here, it does look like France has a slight lead over Finland um, and then Algeria um, in in this race. So far. Great racing here from France, followed by Finland, followed by Romania, with athletes closing the field here from Puerto Rico in lane eight, Eddie Barranco just crossing the line um, to round out the first heat of the men's K1 500 meters. for the final results here. We'd like to let you know about a special event that's happening this evening on Silvers Hill. The Practice Movement Studio located just up the lake at Paddler's Cove is hosting a guided sunset meditation featuring light water essential oils. That is tonight at seven o'clock on Silver Hill. So again, just behind us inside the festival site on Prince Albert Road. So we'll have confirmation of the results in a few minutes and then four more heats of the K1 men 500 meters as we go through the preliminary rounds here um, on our way to semifinals and finals in this event. But great win here by Francis Mouget at the conference. And we do have the results uh, confirmation here. So a few did not start in this event from Algeria, Uganda, and Peru, but Fran Francis Mouget taking the win here from France in a 145.4. Um, all these athletes, again, advancing directly to the semifinal. Um, no athletes making it direct to the A final, given that there are five heats in this event. So we're getting ready to go here in the second heat of the men's K1 500. Um, Again, exciting race here um, in lane two, the 21-year-old making his first senior world championship appearance, but has experience in K2 and K4, Gergely Balog from Hungary. In lane three, 21-year-old making his debut appearance at the senior world championship. He's a 2019 junior world B finalist in K1 200, Jose Alcazar. In lane four, um, Syed Fazlula, um, born in Iran and um, born in Iran and trains in Germany with the support of the ICF and is a recipient of the IOC Refugee Athlete Scholarship. Competed in Tokyo at the Olympics for the IOC Refugee Team, um, Syed Fazlula. 
in lane five, the 2019 world U23 world champion in this event and world champion in K4000. He's a winner earlier this year in Rachitse, Jakob Thorsten uh, from Germany. In lane six, semi-finalist at last year's world championship, 10th place in 2019 in this event, from Israel, Ilya Putpolny. In lane seven, the 17-year-old first world championship appearance from Egypt, Mohamed Ismail. And in lane eight, um, athlete who competed in all three K1 distance of the 2019 World Championship, looking to build from those results and earn a spot in the semifinal from Pakistan, Safan Swale. And I think the athlete from Egypt is uh, not starting here in lane seven, so um, we'll have six athletes out there on the water today. Top five advancing directly to the semifinal. And we're underway here in the second heat of the men's K1 500 meter. As you can see, very fast start for all, all these athletes. Um, the German here getting off the line really well as he did earlier this year in, uh, in Rachitse when he took the win. After 100 meters in this 500, just transitioning a little bit to their travel pace. It does look like a great start from Germany, um, Jakob Thorsten, um, and in lane two, the Hungarian Gergely Balog. At the halfway point, it does look like Germany, and followed by Hungary, and then. Um, our ICF entry, Syed Fazluda, in third place at this stage. Approaching the last 100 meters here, um, late charge by Hungary, trying to mount a challenge to Germany's um, Jacobs. Um, Thorsten's lead, about a full boat now. Um, these athletes will be vying for good spots into the semifinal as the top five will be heading to that the semifinal directly. And coming down to the finish here, really controlled race by the German, followed by the Hungarian, and close finish here for third place between um, the ICF entry and the Israeli. Great racing here by the Rachitze World Cup winner from earlier this year in this event, um, Jacob Thorsten from Germany. And something must have happened to the Mexican paddler in the race. Uh, was in it until about 200 meters in and then just made his way off the course. Um, so maybe a defective equipment or something as we went through. But uh, um, sad to see that that, that happened at, at this stage. have confirmation of the results here in this second heat of the men's K1 500, so confirming the win of Jacob Thorsten from Germany, 
then Hungary, the ICF um, entry of Syed Fazluda, Israel and Pakistan will all be advancing to the semi-final. Um, as mentioned, Jose Alcazar from Mexico um, did not finish the, uh, the race today. And we do still have three more heats of the K1500 to go, so I'll pass it back over to you for heat three, Piel. Thanks, Priya. Um, so eight athletes here in this, or seven athletes here in this race, um, in the third heat of the K1 to men, 500 meters. Um, in lane two, um, athlete competed in all three distances at the 2019 World Championships, and we'd be looking to build on those results to, to advance to the semifinal from Belize, Armando Cruz. Um, in lane three, sixth at the 2021 Asian Olympic qualifier in K1000, who's also competed at the Youth Olympic Games in 2018, from Kyrgyzstan, Rodion Tuginov. In lane four, um, sixth place finisher at the 2019 U23 World Championships in Romania, B finalist in Ricice at the World Cup earlier this year, from Slovenia, Rock Smith. In lane five, the Olympic champion from Rio in K1 1000 meter and silver in K4 500 in Tokyo. He's a double world champion in K2 500 and seven time world medalist. Bronze in Ricice earlier this year from Spain, Marcus Cooper. In lane six, member of Japanese K4 that competed in Tokyo um, earlier, that competed in Tokyo last year, has been focused on crew boats in recent years, so looking forward to seeing him compete in K1 from Japan, Yusuke Miyata. Um, in lane seven, the 30-year-old with experience in K2 and K4 has raced internationally since 2013 from Italy, Moro Creda. And in lane eight, world champion in K2000 last year and ninth in K2 500, um, a finalist in the K1000 in Poznan earlier this year from Sweden, Dennis Kernan. And we have a start here in this event. Um, really, really fast start as you'd expect from, from Spain, um, here in the middle lane, here in lane five. Again, top five will be advancing to the semifinals and then some additional fast times. So there is everything to fight for here and trying to lock a good time in this third heat. So great start here as we approach the last 200 meters of this race. It does look like Sweden's Dennis Kernan is taking the lead and really putting down a great race here after some strong results earlier this year. And approaching the last 50 meters here of this race, does look like um, Sweden has continued to drive this race with Spain and Slovenia um, continuing to have a great result here as well. But the win does go to Sweden, followed by Spain and then Italy in, uh, in third place. replay of the start here again really really fast start from lane six from Japan um, and from Italy in lane seven um, Sweden holding back just a little bit but you can see that transition really quickly um, continued to gain some speed and set himself as the favorite for this race at about the halfway point um, and entering the last 200 almost a full boat over Italy and Spain um, as they were driving in this third heat of the men's K1 500 meters and you can really see the sun starting to come out now for uh, those uh, spectators who are here at the lake. You can really see it in the, in the replay here as well. Um, PL, you've been uh, in the position where you've been racing on Lake Minook before. 
it's really calm out there today, um, but how about that heat? How much does that uh, impact the athletes today? It's 29 degrees, 37 with the Humidex. Yeah, so certainly like the, the heat becomes more of a factor between races than when you're on. Um, just being able to manage kind of your temperature as you're relaxing between races or getting ready. Um, certainly as you're on the water kind of warming up and everything, you do have to adjust the amount of time that you want to spend out there. So um, for racing, I always enjoyed really hot weather. And then certainly uh, all these athletes that raced in Tokyo last year would, would know what hot felt like having had to use ice vests and everything. But uh, certainly uh, it should be a nice day out there as long as the wind remains uh, a little bit low. I think athletes will take hot weather over really windy conditions. Um, but uh, great racing and great great uh, temperature so far that we've had uh, on this first day of the World Championships. Exactly what we ordered for them. Yeah, and it's reminiscing of the 2009 World Championships here in Dartmouth where we had uh, a few days in a row of really great weather. So great to host the world and uh, have some good weather to go with it. And we're just ready to go here in the fourth um, heat of the men's K1 500. Um, in lane one, we'll have the 23-year-old K2 and K4 specialist from New Zealand, Ashton Racer. Um, in lane two, um, not taking the start from India, in lane three, 15th at the under-23 World Championship last year, who races for the Oklahoma Canoe Club, um, from the United States, Augustus Cook. In lane four, second place in the U23 K1000 last year at the World Championships in Portugal. He's also last year's U23 European champion in K1500 and a Junior World Marathon World Champion in 2018. Thorborn Rask from Denmark. In lane five, the Olympic gold medalist in K2000 in Tokyo and the under 23 World Champion in K4500 in 2019 from Australia, Han Jean, Jean Westhusen. In lane six, semi-finalist last year's World Championships in K1 500 and 200 from Singapore, Brandon Oy. In lane seven, um, athletes been racing on the international circuit since 2016 and will be looking for a great result here um, to advance the semi from Tajikistan, um, Norian Naviev, who's also not taken the start. And in lane eight, um, our Canadian representative, our Junior World B finalist in K1000 in 2018 and 2019, has been progressing really, really fast in the last few years, and he's a Junior K4 1000 meter Pan American champion, um, representing the Balmy Beach Canoe Club, Cameron Lowe. So once again, top five will be advancing directly to the semifinal. Um, some additional time will join them there. Everybody else will be out. And we have a start here in the fourth heat of the men's K1 500 meters. Really strong start from Singapore, Brandon Oil here in the lane six. See Cameron Lowe here really driving and generating a lot of power off the line. Um, certainly one of those athletes to watch as he's been progressing onto the national team here at, uh, for Canada. Approaching the first 200 meters, it does look like Australia and the United States are having a strong race here. Um, we'll see as we enter the last, the, the midway point here with the split timing, but Australia looks to have a full boat ahead, followed by Denmark and the United States, um, New Zealand coming in in fourth place at this stage. But Australia in control, as you can see, um, really crossing the, the last 200 and trying to maintain that speed. Um, the, the last few hundred meters of this race. And you'd expect as such from an Olympic gold medalist in the thousand, again, the 500 a little bit shorter, need to have a higher rate and drive a little bit more speed, but certainly one of the top athletes that we have in the field in this event. And strong push gear by a number of these athletes trying to get that third spot. Um, and really guarantee themselves a, a good spot in the semi-final. Every single position matters for which semi-final you get assigned to, so it does matter which position you come in, even if you're in the top five. And it does look like Cameron Lowe here came in third place, so he'll have a nice lane in the semi-finals as he attempts to, to make the finals a little bit later this week. But top of the field in this race, John Westhusen um, taking the win here in uh, this K1 500 fourth heat. I 
think that uh, energy from the hometown crowd was uh, propelling Cameron Lowe along there. We're, we're actually positioned inside, uh, but you can hear the loud roar of the crowd uh, right through the glass here. Yeah, and certainly a great second half there by Cameron as he uh, was coming off a little bit behind at the halfway point and really drove a lot of power and speed in the second half, really committing to trying to get as high as he could. Um, moving at the 200 from probably sixth place um, all the way to third um, at the finish line. So great to see some speed and a lot of and a lot of endurance that allowed him to make that move in the last 200 meters. Absolutely. We do have one more heat to go in the men's K1 500 meter. We're just waiting for those final results uh, here from the last heat. Uh, it is a big job, of course. I'm sure all of you can imagine getting this race course ready to host the best in the world. And the Atlantic Division of Canada has been a crucial player in the preparation and delivery of the on-water race course infrastructure for Canoe 2022. So a huge thank you to everything you have done to make this event possible. Yeah, and a big shout out to Jeff Van Horn's crew uh, and, and, and his dad. Uh, they, they're the ones out there that, that are holding this, this, this course together and are, and are making all of this happen. So, um, for the Van Horns that are committing a lot of time to make this happen and, and everyone that works with them, thank you very much to, to all of you guys um, to making this World Championships happen. So we'll just wait for the final results here in this fourth heat, um, and then we'll move on to the last um, race before our lunch break. And here are the results of the men's K1 500 meter fourth heat. Again, win from Jean Vestusen from Australia in a 143.79, followed by Denmark, Canada, the United States, and Singapore. So advancing directly to the semifinal, we'll have to wait for time for Ashton Reeser um, from New Zealand to know if he is progressing. And we're just about to get going here in the K1 500 meters fifth heat. Um, in lane one, the 26-year-old who represented his country at the last two world championships, reaching the semi in the K1 200 last year in Copenhagen, um, from Trinidad and Tobago, Nicholas Robinson. In lane two, B finalist last year at the under 23 world championships in K2 500, seventh in K4 500 in Rachitze in Poznan earlier this year, from Slovakia, Milan Dorner. In lane three, um, the 2018 B final winner from K in K1 500 at the under 23 world championship, fifth in K1 200 last year at the Asian Olympic qualifier from Chinese Taipei, Yong Lin. In lane four, semi-finalist at the 2021 U23 World Championships in Portugal, eighth at the 2021 World Cup in Russia from Uruguay, Matias Otero. In lane five, two-time junior world finalist in K4 500, fifth in Poznan earlier this year from Poland, Viktor Leszczycki. In lane six, semi-finalist in Rochice earlier this year and U23 B finalist in K1 1000 back in 2018 from the Netherlands, Albert Flyer. In lane seven, a gold medalist in K2000 in Rochice earlier this year with Fernando Pimenta and fifth at Junior Worlds last year in K1000 from Portugal, João Duarte. And in lane eight, the four-time Olympic medalist and three-time Olympian, four times world champion, including K1 500 in 2017 and 2018 from the Czech Republic, Josef Dostal. And we're underway here in this fifth heat of the K1 men 500 meters. Again, top five will advance directly to the semifinal, um, additional times joining them. So really important here to get a, a good race in, in the last heat of the men's K1 500. We'd be expecting a strong race from lane eight. Um, Josef Dostad, he is the double world champion in this event in 2017 and 2018, and does have the lead here as we approach the halfway point, followed by Uruguay and Portugal in this um, fifth heat of this race.
And entering the last 100, Joseph Dostal does have a, a boat lead over the Portuguese, Juaro Duarte, um, and, and making a strong push here for the win in this fifth heat of the men's K1 500. Close race for third place, though, between um, Poland and Uruguay as we're uh, closing out this last race of the morning block here in Dartmouth at Canoe 22. So with these uh, five heats completed, um, we'll be looking to, to generate the semifinal draw, which will have uh, some really interesting races, only three semifinals um, from these five heats, and then uh, we'll be looking to um, create those draws for the semifinals and then select the athletes later this week for the A final in this event. Big move by the Polish athlete here, um, overtaking the Uruguay athlete in the last 100 meters to secure a third place and a good uh, spot in the semifinals. confirmation of the results here, but great win by Josef Dostov of the Czech Republic in this fifth heat of the men's K1 500 meters. Nice way to cool off there, just jumping in the, jumping in the lake. <laughs> yeah, it is a hot one out there and will continue to get hotter through the day. With the Umidox, we'll get to about 37 degrees, so really important to stay hydrated out there and then uh, seek some shade where possible um, as, uh, as this event continues throughout the day. Well, it is time for our first break in the action here at the ICF Sprint and Paracanoe World Championships. Racing resumes in a little over an hour at 2.30. Oh, and just a final confirmation here, actually, of the results from the last heat, um, which you can see on the screen there. So as some of our volunteers and officials take this opportunity to grab some lunch, a big shout out to our platinum partner, Nova Scotia Gaming Corporation, Support for Sport. The Support for Sport program raises funds for training and development opportunities for athletes, coaches, and officials throughout Nova Scotia, and they are the proud sponsor of all of our volunteers who make this event possible. And while the action on the lake takes a break, things are ramping up in the festival area. Now on the first stop with RBC X Music Stage, you can check out Harms at 1.30. If you're wondering, RBCX Music provides a platform for emerging Canadian artists to showcase their music, share their stories, and reach new fans. Thank you. 